In today's lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how you can simplify algebraic expressions by combining like terms. But first, we have to understand what a term is. A term is simply something in an expression that is separated by either an addition or a subtraction sign. For example, the expression shown on the screen has three terms. The first term is 8x, the second term is 9y, and the third term is 4x. And as you can see, each one of these three terms is separated by a plus and a minus sign. Now what we can do is we can shorten up this algebraic expression. We cannot solve this algebraic expression because we don't know the values of x or y and this expression is not set equal to anything. So all we can hope to do is shorten up this algebraic expression by combining like terms. Now we have three terms here and two of those three terms are like terms. Specifically, 8x and 4x are like terms. So what we have to do is understand that this term right here is a like term with 4x, but we have to include the sign in front of 4x in our calculation. What I mean by that is we could take 8x and subtract from it 4x. And the reason we subtract is because we had a subtraction sign in front of 4x. And then I'm just going to put this plus 9y at the end. So if you add 8 of something and you subtracted 4 of the same thing, that would leave you with 4 of that object, in this case 4x. And then we just bring down the 9y. There were no other 9 or there were no other y terms in this expression, so we have to leave 9y by itself. And we cannot combine these two terms because they are not like terms, so this is as far as we can simplify this expression. Now, if you ever want to figure out if you, in fact, simplified your expression to the correct simplest form, what you could do is take your original expression, and what you could do is substitute any value of your choosing for x and y. For example, let's say we just substituted the letter x for the number 1. And for the variable y, we did a different value because it is a different letter. Uh, let's say we just substituted the number 2. And for this last x, we have to use a number 1 because we used a 1 for the first x. So instead of 8 times x, we're going to do 8 times 1. Instead of 9 times y, we're going to do 9 times 2. And instead of 4 times x, we're going to do 4 times 1. And what we're going to do is evaluate this expression. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 9 times 2 is 18, minus 4 times 1, which is 4. Next, we add 8 and 18, which is 26. And 26 minus 4 is equal to 22. Now what we're going to do is take our simplified expression and do the same thing. And we are going to substitute the same variables that we did with our expression up here. So for the x, we will substitute the number 1, and for the y, we substitute the number 2. So we just replace this x here with the number 1, and this y here with the number 2. So when we evaluate, 4 times 1 is 4, plus we have 9 times 2, which is equal to 18, and 4 plus 18 is equal to 22. So if you come up with the same value, when substituting for the original expression and your simplified expression, then you ask simplified correctly. Let's do another example. This example here, we have four terms. We have a 24y right here, and we have a plus 12y right here. So if we combine those two terms, 24y plus 12y is 36y. Now we have two b terms. Right here we have minus 13b, and at the end we have plus b. Now if you ever see a variable by itself, understand the number right in front of that variable, which is called a coefficient, is actually 1. So we would say that we have minus 13b, 
and plus 1b. But we have to be very careful because we have more minuses than we have pluses. So what you could do is think about the number line in your head. If you started at 13 below or negative 13 and moved forward one, you would be at negative 12. So what you have to do when you combine these two like terms is write a minus sign. You would be at minus 12. So let's write 36y minus 12b. And that is as far as you can simplify that expression. And let's do another example. We have a really long algebraic expression here. And to simplify this one, we are going to have to combine like terms and use the distributive property. So the first thing we're going to do is try to identify some like terms. And we can see we have a 1y right here. And we can combine that 1y with this 5y right here. 1y and 5y is a total of 6y. And then I'm just going to bring down this plus 4t because there's nothing that I can immediately combine that with. So we already took care of the first three terms of this expression and put them below. But now what we have to do is take this 3 here and distribute it to each term inside the parentheses. So if we multiply 3 times 3t, that would give us a total of 9t. Next, we have to multiply this 3 by 9y. 3 times 9y is equal to 27y. Now what we have is four terms, and we can shorten this expression up by combining the 6y and the 27y at the end. Because 27y has a plus sign in front of it, we just add that with the 6y, which would give us 33y. And then we have plus 4t, and we have to combine that with plus 9t for a total of 13t. And simplifying this expression to two terms is as far as we can go because you cannot combine a y term with a t term. Let's try another example. This time we have three terms inside parentheses and then we have a term at the end. And notice inside the parentheses we have three things that are like terms. So before we use the distributive property, we can actually combine whatever we can inside the parentheses. And because they're all B terms, we can combine all three of those. So what I'm going to do is bring down this 4 here. And then I'm going to combine these B terms. And the first term is 1B plus 7B, which is equal to 8B. And 8B take away 3B would give us 5B. And then I'm just going to bring down the plus 9b at the end. All right, the next thing we have to do is multiply this 4 by 5b. So if we had four sets of 5b, that would give us a total of 20b. Now we can add that with 9b for a total of 29b. So we were able to take the beginning expression and simplify it all the way down to one term. Now the next example that we are going to do is applying the concept of simplifying expressions by finding the perimeter of this triangle. So what we want to do is figure out what is an expression that would represent the perimeter of this triangle. Now to review the perimeter of any shape is to find the total distance around an object. That's simply taking side one of a triangle, side two of a triangle, and side three of a triangle, and adding them all together. But notice, this triangle does not have whole numbers as sides. Each side is represented by an algebraic expression. But that really doesn't matter. All we do is we pick any of the three sides for our first side. For example, Let's start with this side right here. 
So what we're going to do is write 2x minus 5. That's going to be side 1. Side 2, we will choose x plus 8. And the third side we will choose is 3x minus 3. Now remember, to find the perimeter of a triangle, we have to add all three sides. So we're going to take side 1, side 2, and side 3 and add them by simply writing an addition sign in the middle of those three expressions. Now that we have done that, we must identify all like terms. Right here we have an x term. Right here we have an x term. And right here we have an x term. Now that we have identified all of our like x terms, we just combine them. So if we take 2x and add that with 1x with 3x, that would give us a total of 6x. Now, if we take a look at this minus 5 here, and this plus 8, and this minus 3, we should notice that none of those contain a variable right after those. So we call those parts of an algebraic expression a constant. And all constants are like terms. So we can combine the minus 5, the plus 8, and the minus 3. So if we were to start with our positive 8 right here, and then subtract 5 from that, that would give us 3. And then if we took that 3, which is still positive, and subtracted this 3 from that, that would leave us with 0. So after our 6x here, you don't write anything because you do not write plus 0 or minus 0. So the expression that represents the perimeter of the shown triangle is 6x. Let's try one more example. This time, we have a rectangle, and we want to find the perimeter of this rectangle. Now remember, the perimeter means you must add the distance of all the sides. And we have four sides for any rectangle. So we're going to start by understanding that if this side is 3x, then the opposite side must be 3x as well. And if the top is 3x plus 2, the bottom is 3x plus 2. Now, one thing that we can do is start by taking the rectangle's length and adding it to its width. That would give us half of the rectangle's perimeter. So if we take 3x and add that to 3x plus 2, that would give us half of the perimeter. And after we found half of the perimeter, we could take that quantity and we could double that by multiplying it by 2. So I wrote a 2 on the outside of parentheses here to show that we're going to double the sum of the length and the width. So the first thing we can do here is look inside the parentheses and combine the 3x and the 3x because they are like terms. So 3x and 3x is 6x. And we have to bring down the plus 2. We cannot combine that constant with 6x. But remember, we still have to double that sum. So let's bring down the number 2 on the outside. Now what we have to do is use a distributive property and multiply 2 times 6x, which is 12x, and then multiply 2 by 2, which is 4. And that is as far as we can simplify this expression. 12x plus 4 is the algebraic expression that would represent the perimeter of the shown rectangle.